What is going on YouTube? Greetings from the Ruby Princess. We are in Huatuco, Mexico today, which is in the state of Oaxaca. If you've been watching my cruise adventures for a while, this is one of the first cruise ports I went to back in like December of 2022 and has a special place in my heart. It's one of my favorite cruise ports to visit. It's just a really cool looking town. But the reason I love it is there is great snorkeling here and I'm excited to film this video, get off the ship and do some snorkeling. If you go back and look at my old video, one of my first cruising videos, Videos, you'll see some of the footage from my snorkeling here but that's not why you clicked on this video today you want to know about ways to reduce your cruise costs so that's what we're going to talk about today if you've been following me for a while you know I love the search engine cruise plump if you've never heard of it it is amazing you guys have been asking for me to talk about it again and maybe do a little bit of a tutorial so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to jump into Cruise Plum and I'm going to show you some features in it. I won't go full in depth on it, but I'll give you enough knowledge to navigate your way through and save money on cruises. So let's jump into Cruise Plum. OK, so the biggest thing I love about Cruise Plum is you'll see down here on the right, it says crafted with love by a bunch of cruise enthusiasts. There's nothing to buy on Cruise Plum. It's just a service search engine. The results you get are not dictated by the cruises that make this search engine the most money or cruise companies that they have a deal with. It's strictly a search engine. You cannot book anything on here. You have to go to the cruise website or go through your travel agent or something like this. But that's what I love about it. There's no profit motive. Other search engines are usually travel agents and they're only showing you cruises that they can make money off of. They're not showing you companies that they don't work with and things like that. That's why I love this Cruise Plum. And there's a bunch of other reasons that you'll see here. So when you get to this initial point with Cruise Plum, you can scroll through and you'll see there's a bunch of different tools on here that you can click on shortcuts. I don't really use those. I just click on search up here and I do a standard search. Now, if you register for an account with them, it will log you on to your account, which is good for one reason. When you have an account with them, which is free, you just give them your email address. They've never emailed me anything, by the way. So when you log on here, the benefit of it is that you'll be able to track cruises and get alerts sent to you if a cruise drops in price. So that's what I do with it. But I won't log on here so you don't have to see how I have it set up. I want you to see exactly what you'll see when you first go to Cruise Plum. So once you go in here, you'll see there's like eight reasons why to use Cruise Plum, which I love. The biggest reason you'll see right here, no hidden taxes or fees. And it's one of the biggest things I love. When you go to a cruise website, it usually doesn't include the tax port fees and gratuities and the price. But with Cruise Plum, it's an all in price. Your cruise fare, taxes, port fees and gratuities. It's one of the biggest reasons I love it. And you'll see a bunch of other different reasons why it's great. This first one here, you can search by one, two, three or four passengers. And then when you get your results, it'll show you the price for one passenger or two passengers or three passengers or four passengers. So you'll know right away what the total cost of your cruise is all in taxes, port fees, gratuities and the cruise fare, like I mentioned. It's just a great search engine here. And it also shows you here that you can search a bunch of different ways, but I'm going to show you that right now. So press start searching and it'll ask you how many passengers. I'm going to choose one because us solos are the ones that usually have the big problem searching for cruises because we get a price. And then once we go in there and say we're cruising solo, then it usually doubles the price. With Cruise Plum, you're going to get the price that you're going to pay as a solo, which I love. But if you were to search as two passengers, you're going to get a price that reflects two passengers. So you'll see here country of residence, Canada, United States. A lot of people will say uh, Cruise Plum sucks because it doesn't have my country, but all choosing the country of residence does is show you the search result in that currency. You can still use Cruise Plum as a search engine to find affordable cruises outside of the United States and Canada because you'll be able to sort the cruises by price. So it's still a great search engine even if you're out of the United States because you can sort it by price. It'll convert over for the most part. So I'm just going to search United States here. I'm on a cruise right now. So 
this might take a second here. Sorry if it takes too long. Maybe I'll just cut this out of the video. But right here, it's got 5,358 results. So what I'm gonna do is hit this configure button and make it where it has 100 cruises. And that's a great way to limit the amount of pages you have to scroll through. But this is every cruise in the world right now. So obviously that's gonna be a lot. So it's still 1,072 pages of search results with 100 cruises per page. So you'll see here, there's a bunch of filters over here on the left and we'll talk about those in a second. What I wanna show you is this main setup right here. So you'll see you can sort by date, vessel, route, number of days, the cabin, the fare, the total cabin price, and the cost per day. So when you're a solo, the and also when you're cruising with other people, the cabin price per day is the true cost of a cruise and the way you judge apples to apples. So if you got two 10-day cruises going to basically the same places in the Caribbean, I would sort it by cost per day to see which cruise is the better deal. A lot of us solos get wrapped around this solo supplement thing out there. The supplement you pay is not an indicator of value for a solo cruiser. It's a marketing gimmick. The way you tell what a cruise is going to cost you as a solo is to look at the cost per day and compare cruise to cruise. I have a whole lot on this in another video I did called How to Find Cheap Cruises. So go check that video out. But take my word for it. Don't focus on solo supplement. It doesn't mean anything. You can have a cruise where you pay zero solo supplement that will be more expensive than the exact same cruise with a 100% solo supplement where you're paying double what someone cruising two people would cruise. Trust me, it's a marketing gimmick. Don't get wrapped around the axles on that. Sorry for that little rant there. All right, so you'll see here, I'm gonna sort by cabin price per day. So we're gonna see the cheapest cruise out there right now. And it's this 16 day cruise on MSC. It's a transatlantic, it's April 3rd, 2024. By the time I put this video out, it might be past April 3rd. But you can see, you can get that cruise for $60 a day and that's all in. Now I'm gonna click on more info here and it'll drop down. And it'll show you right here, the inside cabin is $956 for the entire cruise, which works out to $60 a day. You'll see the base fare is $588, taxes are $112, tips, which is gratuities, is $256. That's all in on this cruise would be $60 a day, 16 day cruise for under a thousand bucks, can't beat that. You can see here, it'll also show you the other cabins. So if you wanted to go Ocean View, you could get it for $1,500, which is still under $100 a day, which is great. And the balcony would barely be over $100 a day. So hopefully this shows you like the power of this search engine, but I wanna show you some more things. So when you go here and you're looking at this, these search results, you can filter by more things. So let's say you're like me and you only travel in inside cabins. So you can sort by just inside cabins. So you can get rid of all these other cabins by selecting inside cabin. And now it'll update and it will only show me the inside cabins. So let's say you're a balcony person. You won't cruise in anything but a balcony. Click on balcony and now it's showing me nothing but balconies. I have it sorted by cost per day. So I can see here the cheapest cabin, balcony cabin is this Majestic Princess from Auckland to Seattle, 24 days, $114. That's a bargain right there. You can see we can click on more info. So you'll see the balcony price here is $114 a day. But if you wanted to cruise the inside cabin, it's only $80 a day. So that's pretty awesome if you ask me. But you can see how powerful this search tool is. You can also just look at a certain cruise line. Let's say you only want to cruise with Norwegian. You can click on here and just search Norwegian inside cabins. You can see their cheapest one per day is 97 a day for this three-day cruise on Norwegian Sky. So that's a pretty powerful tool as well. You'll also see, like let's say you just want to do round trip cruises. You you click yes, but let's say you wanna leave out of one port. So let's say you wanna leave out of the out of Florida. So I'm gonna click on Florida here. So this show, is showing me all the cruises leaving out of Florida, but I'm gonna put my import in Europe. So I'll put Northern Europe and Southern Europe here. So now I'm looking at every cruise that goes from Florida to Europe. 
So you can see how powerful this tool is. I'll show you another one here real quick. So let's use the debark port as Asia. I'm gonna click Asia here and we're going to use the embarkation port as the west coast of the united states because that's the most common cruise from the united states to asia so i can look here and see there's one from vancouver to tokyo so if i didn't want to fly to asia from the west coast i could hop on this 18-day cruise from vancouver to tokyo it's pretty affordable actually fifteen hundred dollars all in so $122 a day, that's way less than a business class flight would be. A business class flight would be probably about $2,200 from Vancouver to Tokyo, maybe a little bit more. So I can just take this cruise and not have any jet lag and get over to Asia. So you can see how amazing this is here. Let me, let me look at some other things here. Let's say you wanted to just look at cruises. You know when your vacation is, it's in 2025 in February. And so I can look at all of the cruises from February and let's say you're like, well, I can only cruise in February and I can only cruise out of the east coast of the United States because that's where I live. So you just select east coast. So now I'm looking at all the cruises in February headed out of the east coast of the United States. There's a bunch of New York here. You'll probably you'll probably see a bunch from Florida, although I didn't click Florida. So let me click Florida. <laughs> as well. Florida is its own separate categories because there's so many cruises going out of Florida. So if you click East Coast, you're only going to get like New York, Baltimore, Norfolk, places like that. So now I can see everything coming out of the East Coast here. And uh, yeah, so you can see like what a great planning tool. And there's so many other things that you can search on here. You can narrow it down to. It's pretty amazing. Like what, even the specific vessel so let's say you're like, I really love Ruby Princess and I only want to sail Ruby Princess. So boom, I can look right here and see all of the cruises on Ruby Princess. There's a ton in 2025 since that's what I selected, right? I selected February 2025 up here. So let's undo that and see more cruises on Ruby. So now I can look on at all the cruises on Ruby Princess. Let's sort it by date. I'm actually on these cruises right here that you're looking at. I'm on this cruise ship until until the 21st. So you'll see a bunch of Alaskan cruises here, Hawaiian cruise, and some West Coast cruises. Sorry to go so long on this, but this is my number one recommendation for how to save money on cruises. Use Cruise Plum, compare apples to apples. You'll be super happy that you did. Okay, so the next two things we're gonna talk about are ways to actually get some cash back off your cruises. So the first one is the rebate program website called Rakuten. My friend Andrea, who I met on the Sky Princess, is the one that introduced me to this, and I'll be forever thankful to her because it's basically just free money to do what I already do. Rakuten has a bunch of rebate categories, and one of them is cruising. They have rebates on a couple of different cruise lines. One of them is Princess and the other Celebrity, sometimes Celestial and some other cruise lines. And they add them and they leave at all times. But Princess and Celebrity have always been on there and they give a rebate anywhere from 2% up to 10%. It changes often, so go back and look, but you'll always get some sort of rebate off Princess and Celebrity Cruises. Like I said, it's really easy to sign up for. You can get it right booked into your browser, which is what I have, or you can go to Rakuten's website and go to Princess or Celebrity through their website and they'll automatically know that you, you know, use their service. And then every quarter, they either send you a check or they make a deposit into PayPal, however you wanna do it. I know Andrea's old school, she wanted a check, so they send her a check every quarter. Me. I just like to get it deposited into my PayPal account and I transfer it over to my checking. But it's just free money. I was already gonna book Princess and Celebrity Cruises anyway. And it's just a great way to get some money back every quarter. And that's an easy way to get some money. All right, the next thing you should do to save some money is check what discounts you get just for being you. Like me, for instance, I'm a veteran. And so with almost every cruise line, I get some sort of veteran discount. A lot of them have first responder benefits, teacher benefits, senior citizen benefits. No matter what you do, just Google and see if maybe the cruise lines offer some kind of benefit for what you are, what category you fall in. You just gotta do a little research and you'll find things that qualify you for 
discounts on the cruise or some onboard spending money. The next one is another no brainer if you cruise all the time. When you go on whatever cruise line you're on, go down to the future cruise desk and buy a future cruise credit. On Princess, pay a hundred bucks future cruise credit. And when you book a cruise, you get a hundred dollars off the cruise. So if you book a thousand dollar cruise, it'll cost you $900. So you got your hundred dollars back right there. And they'll give you onboard credit anywhere from $25 all the way up to $125, depending on the length of your cruise and what room you book. But that's just free money on board and all cruise lines have some sort of program like that where you pay a future cruise credit and you get some sort of benefit, including that whatever the price was back. Speaking of that, when you go down to the future cruise office, check out some future cruises and see if you can get a discount. A lot of times if you book on board the cruise ship, you'll get huge discounts. I came on board a cruise and I was looking at taking my mother to Venice and then taking a transatlantic back from Rome to Fort Lauderdale and it was pretty expensive online, but I was on the cruise ship and I went down there and it was 50% off. So I booked my mother's cruise, her uh, balcony cabin. I booked it down there. I booked it for both of us and eventually I booked myself my own cabin but uh, I got it for 50% off, which was a huge savings, especially since it was a balcony room. So make sure you do that. Go down to the future cruise office with whatever cruise you're cruising and see if you can get some discounts. A lot of times they'll have some available for you. The next one is book with a travel agent. So I don't really do this that much, but a lot of my friends do. I probably should start doing it in the future, but a lot of times travel agents will be able to get you discounts on a cruise because maybe they've got a bunch of clients that are booking the same cruise or from the same cruise line so they can get a group rate. And so you'll find oftentimes that they can get you a cheaper rate. And at a minimum, they can probably get you some more onboard credit or like free internet or free drink package or something like that that'll reduce the overall cost of your cruise. So check with the travel agent. You don't have to book with them. Just contact one that you're comfortable with and ask them um, what kind of rate they can get. And if it's not that great of a rate, then book it yourself. The next way to save money on your cruise expenses is look for the cruise loyalty program that fits the things that you spend money on when you go cruising. All of the cruise lines have loyalty programs, but they all have different perks. Some might be perks that are valuable to you and others might be perks that aren't valuable. So look at the cruise lines and see which ones have valuable perks. I'll give you a, for, a couple of for instances. So here with Princess, since I travel on cruise ships for so long, a month, two months at a time, laundry is important to me. That might not be important to someone that's only spending seven days on a Princess ship, but to me it's important. So with their loyalty program, I get free laundry at the elite level, which is what I am. And I can either send it out and get it done for me for free, or I can go down to their laundromats that they have on board and they'll give me tokens, do my laundry free in there as well. So that's a good benefit for me. So as far as uh, some other cruise lines, so Royal Caribbean, for instance, has free drinks at certain levels. The first level you get free drinks is the diamond level. And it's not that hard to get to, to be honest, especially for a solo traveler. And at that level, you get four free drinks and it's alcoholic drinks, it's soda, it's coffees, whatever you drink. Most Royal Caribbean ships have Starbucks on board, which I love. So if I was on a Royal Caribbean ship and I was diamond, I'd get four free Starbucks a day, which is amazing. And then as you move up their levels, they add a drink to your package or to your benefit. So you can go from four to five drinks. And then the last level that they give you drinks is six total drinks. So that's basically a free drink package on board Royal Caribbean. Another thing that Royal Caribbean does that I love as a solo cruiser is at somewhere around 350 days, they reduce the solo supplement from 200% to 150%. So as a solo cruiser, I instantly save money on Royal Caribbean cruises by being a member of their loyalty program. So go out there and look for a loyalty program that fits your cruise style and what you actually spend money on and start moving up their loyalty ladder and that'll reduce the cost of your cruises. 
Another great tip that someone told me, maybe it was Emma Cruz's or someone like that, is to book on older ships. Older ships just have cheaper cruise fares because they're not as in demand as the newer ships, especially with the cruise lines like NCL and Royal Caribbean that always step up their game in the quality of their ships and how much whiz bang things they have on board like go-kart tracks, um, amusement parks, rock climbing walls, crazy water slides. Like right now, the icon of the seas just came out with Royal Caribbean and their old new ships are now much cheaper because Icon of the Seas came out. So if you, wanna, if you wanted to book Wonder of the Seas a year ago when it was a new ship, it was the most expensive. Now it's a little bit cheaper because Icon came out. And if you go on a super old Royal Caribbean ship like Enchantment of the Seas, which I was on for a month, you can get it ridiculously cheap. I stayed on Enchantment of the Seas for like $1,300 for a whole month. And guess what? They do the same exact itineraries. So if you don't care about go-kart tracks and the latest specialty restaurants and all that kind of stuff, you just care about the travel, then it really doesn't matter what ship you're on. Book the older ships and you'll save some dough. Another way to save money is if you are a gambler, figure out what cruise lines give you the best benefits as a gambler. I know Princess and Carnival is amazing. Once you get into their system, every email you get from them, you can book three free cruises. I've cruised almost a year and I haven't really lost that much money gambling. I've told my story in other videos, so I'm not gonna rehash it here, but go watch my, one of my monthly expense report videos, like the one from March, 2024. And I do a detailed explanation of how I got into the casino system, even though I don't gamble very much. But if you are a gambler, there are zillions of deals out there for you. And even if you like gamble a lot in Vegas or some other places like MGM in like Detroit, Michigan or something, a lot of times the cruise lines will have deals with them and you can book cruises through like MGM, like to Royal Caribbean or NCL, things like that. So if you're a gambler, make sure you look around and see if you can get your cruise fare comped because they're gonna, they're gonna want you on board gambling. They might as well have you there gambling instead of, in Las Vegas or something like that. So that's a way to save money on your cruise fare. Now you might lose a lot of money, but if you're, if you're a gambler anyway and you were gonna lose it, you might as well get the cruise for free, right? The next thing comes from my like frugal nature. So bring stuff with you on board that'll reduce the cost of your cruising. So I love Fufu coffees, but I never get drink packages because they just don't make a lot of sense for me. On Princess, it's like $60 a day extra, and I'm never gonna drink $60 worth of coffee. I don't drink alcohol. I try not to drink very much soda nowadays. So I have to spend $5 per coffee if I don't have a drink package. So what I decided to do was in the port that I'm sailing from, just go to the local grocery store and buy a bunch of coffee creamer because I like the Fufu coffees. And so I went and bought a bunch of the almond creme brulee creamer that I like. And now I just make my own on board. I go up to the buffet, I get the free coffee, I fill up my own little mug. And now I have my Fufu coffee for, you know, like 25 cents instead of $5. So figure out what you, you know, like to spend a lot of money on and see if there's a way you can reduce that cost by bringing stuff on board that'll give you the same satisfaction of you know drinking a bunch of coke but you bring your own cokes and instead of paying four dollars a coke you're paying 50 cents a coke all right so those were my cost saving recommendations how to reduce your spending on a cruise ship and make this life a lot cheaper what do you think of the things i recommended they make sense for you what tips do you have? Do you have any that I didn't mention here? Make sure you comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed, 70% of you are not. According to my analytics, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you next video.